In this old guy DIY video, I'm going to modify this trailer that had a 14 foot Starcraft on it to accommodate a Grumman sport boat or a canoe. So I'll show you how I do it. Well, the sport boat is nearly flat and I measured it and what I want now is 30 inches from the outside of one board to the outside of the other board. So I'm going to take these two two by sixes and I'm going to put a piece across the front edge and I'm going to mount hinges back here. So when in fact I'm loading the boat, uh, the bunks will tip down just as they are right now. Gravity will be my friend and it'll drop the bunks to make it easy to load a boat from even the most shallow ramp. Now I cut two 30 inch cross members I just screwed them in with two three inch screws on each board. And then here in the front, since gravity wants to tip the rear end down, in the front I just put a clamp on to hold it in place. And then I marked on the underside of the board right here. I'm going to flip the board over and now move on to the next step of the assembly. I'm using these Mastercraft 4-inch door hinges that I got free after rebate at Menards. So when I attach the hinges, I just line the hinge up with that mark that I scribed, and then I put a wood screw here at the end, so in the course of life, the uh, pin doesn't happen to pull out. And it's the same thing on the other side. Since my bunks are 30 inches apart, I cut a 36 inch piece of, uh, basically it's two by three, and then just set that against the back of the hinges and then screwed the hinges in. So when this thing is on the trailer, this piece will be down and I can actually bolt through here into the trailer and it makes for a nice modular design. So if in fact I wanna remove this thing, it's just a matter of taking out three bolts. But you need to do this step uh, before you mount it to the trailer. Otherwise, because of the length of the two by sixes, um, you can't get the angle to actually get a screw gun in there. Now that I have it set in place, I centered the bunks on 15 inches. And now I'll just drill a few holes through that two by three and I can mount it to the trailer. And this is what the hardware I'm using looks like. It's a quarter inch bolt with a washer on each side and then a nylock nut. To add some rigidity to this part that hangs out in no man's land, I took a piece of two by three. And here's the one I'm about to install. But anyway, on the underside of the board, I screwed it in just like that. So you can see my screw holes here with the three inch wood screws. But anyway, with the rear end of the boat hanging out here in no man's land, it just provides some more structure. Now to make the height of the front and the rear the same, I cut a couple pieces of uh, two by three by five inches long, and I'll let that clamp loose, and I'll put these little boards under those two by sixes and screw them in place. And my final piece of wood was a 12 inch two by four, just axed to kind of square the assembly up when in fact it's in the down position. So that's what the thing looks like. I was kind of engineering as I went tonight. I did this one a little different than I've done the, the ones I've made for the last 10 years, but I think this will be fine. Now I wanted this thing to be easy to load, so this is its natural position now due to gravity. We have more weight behind the hinge than in front of the hinge. So my next step is to take a piece of paracord and I'm going to put a little string on here that will stop it about like that. So when the back is a foot off the ground, uh, I can back the trailer up. Otherwise, obviously, if you had it like this and you start backing up, you're just gonna tear those hinges off. And this is what it looks like with my little paracord tether in place. I tied a knot down here around that cross member because if you don't, then when the unit goes down, the rope will end up hanging down on the road and might actually get worn through. But uh, this way it serves as a good stop. And the back is probably nine or 10 inches off the ground. So I'll be able to back into the launch 
but uh, certainly I won't need much water or muck to get the boat lined up. So now I'll put the boat on the trailer and we'll see what's next. So I ended up doing some rework. I just kind of guessed on what I would need in the beginning. But when I put the boat on this thing, number one, it was too wide. I had initially gone 30 inches from the outside of one board to the outside of the other. And when I set a canoe on there, the canoe just dropped right through. So I reduced that down to 22 inches. And uh, this thing is now 93 inches long. So between, between the boards right now, I have 11 inches. So the sport boat and the canoes will in fact fit on it. So I'll load the sport boat up and take another picture in just a minute. This is what the trailer looks like now with the sport boat sitting on it. So you can see the wooden structure that I made today. And then tomorrow I'll raise up those keel rollers and uh, make them functional. And then I'll also take some pictures with the canoe on here rather than the sport boat. So the total cost, like I said, the hinges were $8 from Menards, but I got 100% rebate, so they were free. And then I have $12 worth of lumber here, call it a buck worth of screws. So for $20, I have bunks made to convert a trailer uh, from a regular boat to a canoe. And it only takes removal of three bolts to take the whole structure off. So this last summer I picked up some of this material that's uh, plastic with a fiberglass coating. It's kind of slick and on top I thought hey this is similar to what carpet does but it's plastic beneath and it should give a softer ride on the hull of the canoe or the sport boat. So I decided I'd try putting this stuff on my bunks see how it works. So I did that and then at the end uh, down here at the back end, I just took a piece of PVC and uh, I cut this chunk out of it with a grinder and I just slipped it onto the board. You can see I slipped it on there and just shot two wood screws through from the bottom to hold it in place. But now when I'm in some of these little launches at the end of goat paths, uh, the bow will just pull up over this PVC it'll ride on there nicely as it tracks its way towards the rollers. So this is what it looks like with the bunks complete on the trailer. Set the keel rollers in the right position now. And here at the back, you can see the little PVC piece I described earlier. And for those of you that watched my video on raising the transom two inches, you can see that the anti-cavitation plate's about the same height as the bottom of the boat. And that's what it looks like. So it cost about $30, it took about three hours because I didn't have a really good plan. I had to rework a little bit, but in the end it looks like it'll do the job. Have a good day.